first grade. Welcome back. It's Miss Stanwert. Today we are going to read the story called Judaism. Our learning objectives are to review key facts about Abraham, identify key information about Judaism, demonstrate an understanding of the word synagogue, record key facts about Judaism on a graphic organizer, and identify key information about Judaism. Our key vocabulary for today are Hebrew, Jewish, prophet, rabbi, and synagogue. Hebrew, as an adjective, means related to Abraham and the first Jewish people who lived long ago. Hebrew, as a noun, means the ancient language of the Jewish people. Okay, so an example of Hebrew as a noun, the ancient language of the Jewish people, would be this picture. Okay, that is Hebrew, the written language of the Jewish people. Okay, and if I was talking about Hebrew, the adjective, meaning related to Abraham and the first Jewish people who lived long ago, um, I could say Moses led the Hebrew people out of Egypt into Canaan. Jewish as an adjective. Jewish means belonging to or related to the practice of Judaism, which is one of the religions that we learned about yesterday. Hanukkah is a Jewish holiday that is celebrated during the month of December. Okay, and this is the menorah that... Um, they use when they celebrate Hanukkah. All right, prophet. Prophet is a noun, and a prophet is a leader in a religion who shares messages believed to be from God. Moses was the Jewish prophet who led his people to freedom. Rabbi. A rabbi is a noun. Rabbi is a religious leader for the Jewish faith. The rabbi read to us from the Torah on Saturday, our Sabbath. Synagogue. Synagogue is a noun. And a synagogue is a house of worship for the Jewish faith. So, um, here's a picture of a synagogue, okay? That's where they go to worship. And an example would be, Jewish people often go to the synagogue to pray. All right. So, let's do... A little bit of, whew, sorry, essential background information. How are the three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam alike? How are they all alike? They all have a holy place um, um, in Jerusalem, right? And what else? They're all monotheistic, right? Monotheistic meaning believing in one God, okay? Now, remember that Abraham was a man who lived thousands of years ago. Other people were living during this, who were living during this time worshipped many different gods and goddesses. So Abraham was believing differently than those other people that were living at that time. What ancient civilizations have you learned about that had polytheistic religions or religions that believed in many gods and goddesses? Mesopotamia and Egypt, right? Okay. So, in the previous read aloud, um, we read this little thing, right? Well, about 4,000 years ago, in a land called Ur, there lived a man by the name of Abraham. The people of Ur worshipped many different gods, one for the sun, one for the moon, one for the stars, and so on. But Abraham had a different belief. He believed that there was only one God. Stories tell us that this one all-powerful God spoke to Abraham, promising to lead him out of Ur. Abraham and his wife Sarah packed their things and traveled far, far away to a place called Canaan. Some people refer to Canaan as the Promised Land. Today, it is known as the country of Israel, which, sorry, 
I'm kidding. Which is where the holy city of Jerusalem was located. It was here that Abraham remained faithful to his one God, who is often called the God of Abraham. So where um, did Abraham journey to when he left the land of Ur? Ur, Ur, yeah, Ur, sorry. Where did he go? To Canaan, okay? And remember, Abraham worshipped only one God. Abraham believed that God would make him the father of many nations, and Abraham became the first Jewish person. The faith that Jewish people follow is called Judaism. So many uh, religions have prophets, and remember, prophets are leaders in a religion who share um, messages believed to be from God. Today, you're going to learn about the Jewish people and their faith and how, um, sorry, and how one, a man, one of the Jewish prophets, helped lead the Jewish people out of slavery many years ago. All right. Okay, remember our key vocabulary, Hebrew, Jewish, prophet, rabbi, and synagogue. Here we go. I want you to listen carefully to find out the name of the prophet who freed the Jewish people from slavery and why that was important. So, hi, I'm Miriam. I am Jewish. Jewish people practice a religion called Judaism. Judaism began a long time ago with the Hebrew people, descendants of Abraham. You've already heard about Abraham. Jewish people believe that God made a covenant or an agreement with Abraham. In this covenant, God promised to take care of Abraham and his descendants, and Abraham promised to worship only God instead of following the common practice of worshiping many different gods. So Abraham left the land of Ur. Do you remember where he went? Canaan, okay? Long after Abraham died, the Hebrews had to leave the promised land of Canaan because there was not enough food to eat. They moved to, the, to neighboring Egypt where they were made to work as slaves for the king or the pharaoh of Egypt. Okay, so um, in our, here we go. I'm going to find the right page, so just hang on a second. It might take a minute. We can probably find it in this one. So they moved to, oh, that's not a very good one. Hang on, guys. I'm trying to find a good picture where we can. So they were in, they were moving to Egypt, okay? So they were moving from Canaan, which was somewhere over here, I believe, into Egypt. Now i got to go all the way back. We're almost there. There we go. All right. So remember, slaves are people who are made to work for someone without pay or freedom. All right. What do you see in this picture? This is a sculpture of Moses done by a famous artist named Michelangelo. Okay. After many years, God sent a prophet or a leader in a religion who shares messages believed to be from God named Moses to help free the Hebrew people and lead, lead them back to Canaan, the promised land. Okay. This is someone's depiction of what Moses did to help lead the Hebrew people out of Egypt. Learn, listen to learn about what Moses did. Moses asked the Egyptian Pharaoh to free the Jewish people from slavery, but the Pharaoh refused. God punished the Pharaoh for enslaving the Jewish people or for making them slaves. Finally, the Pharaoh let the Jewish, pe the Jewish slaves leave Egypt and return to Canaan. Moses led them free to freedom by obeying God who parted or pushed back the waters of the Red Sea 
so that people could walk through to Canaan. This journey out of Egypt is called the Exodus. Okay. So the Jewish people, led by Moses, left their life of slavery in Egypt and went back to Canaan. So remember, Abraham took them from Ur to Canaan. Then when they ran out of food in Canaan, they went down to Egypt, but they were slaves in Egypt. So then God sent the prophet Moses um, to go to Egypt and free the um the Jewish slaves and take them back to uh, Canaan, okay? It's a lot of traveling. All right, let's see. Today, I am celebrating the holiday of Pesach or Passover with my family. With my family. It is one of our most important Jewish holidays. Passover is when we celebrate the freedom of our people from slavery in Egypt and their journey back to Canaan. I am going to the synagogue to hear the story of Moses once again. Won't you come along? This is my synagogue, or temple. You can tell it apart from the other houses of worship because it has the Star of David on it. King David was one of our finest kings, and his six-pointed star has become the symbol of the Jewish faith. Let's go in. Do you guys see the Star of David? It's right here. What do you see in the entrance? A Star of David. Very good. Actually, two. One here and then one here. Inside, I will introduce you to my uncle, the rabbi. A rabbi is a religious leader for the Jewish faith. He will read from the Torah, a beautiful handwritten scroll. The Torah refers to all of the Hebrew scriptures, but most often when Jewish people say Torah, they mean the first five books that are mostly about Moses. There is my uncle. We are a little bit late. He has already begun reading the story. He reads in Hebrew, the ancient language of the Jewish people. Tonight, as part of our celebration, we will tell the Exodus story. Would you like to join my family at our Seder? Seder is the name of our special Passover dinner. It's a lot like our weekly Shabbat, our Sabbath, our holy day of rest on Saturday when the whole family gathers together for a big special meal. The youngest person in the room who can speak is the one who begins the... Seder um, by asking, why is this night different from all other nights? At a Seder, the food we eat is very important. Each food put on the Seder plate has a special meaning to help us remember the story of Moses and the Hebrews escaping from Egypt. Passover lasts for one week. And each day we eat matzah, or flatbread. This is because when Jewish people fled Egypt so quickly, they didn't have time to wait for their bread to rise. So when we make, when you make bread, um, you normally have to wait for it to rise so that it gets nice and fat and fluffy, okay? And you do that before you put it in the oven and bake it, okay? And if you don't, then your bread comes out flat. Okay, so the Jewish people, they didn't have enough time to let the bread rise, so the bread that they baked, baked flat. Okay, all they had to eat was flat bread. See what I mean by each food at our Seder having special meaning? Passover is a really important holiday for my people, but we have lots of other holidays as well. What do you see in this picture? We also celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which happens during late summer or autumn. We eat sweet foods such as apples and honey to represent our wish for a sweet year ahead. This is when we thank God for the creation of the world. What do you think it means to wish for a sweet year? What's a sweet year? A good year, okay? What do you see in this picture? 
Do you see all the candles and then the Star of David? During another Jewish holiday called Hanukkah, meaning the Festival of Lights, Jewish people all around the world light nine branched candlesticks called menorahs. They light the menorahs to remember the past, a time when they rebelled against the rulers who had conquered them. These rulers told the Jewish people that they could no longer pray to God. The story goes that when the Jewish people went to the temple, they only found a small jar of oil with which to relight the lamp. However, the oil lasted miraculously for eight days until they were able to get more. Another of our holidays, Yom Kippur, is a time when we ask God to forgive our sins or bad behavior. We try to live our lives by the Ten Commandments, special laws given to Moses by God. They tell us that there is only one God and that we are to respect him by treating others respectfully. Shalom, shalom is a word in Hebrew and it means peace to you. Okay guys, that was our story. Now let's do a few uh, comprehension questions and some word work and then we'll be good to go. So what are the people who practiced Judaism called? Jewish people. The descendants of Abraham were known as the first were known at first as Hebrews and later as Jewish people. How many gods did Abraham and the Hebrews or Jewish people worship? Only one God. According to the read aloud, what special laws were given to Moses by God to say that there is only one God? The Ten Commandments. What was the name of the Jewish prophet or teacher who helped free the Jewish people? Moses. Moses led the Jewish people out of Egypt to Canaan, the Promised Land. This is known as the story of Exodus, which happened long ago in ancient times. Why were the Jewish people so unhappy in Egypt? Because the Pharaoh, or the king, had made them slaves, right? So he was making these people work without pay and without freedom, which is not very nice. What is the symbol of the Jewish religion? The Star of David. And what is the Jewish house of worship called? Synagogue or temple. Miriam mentions that the Jewish Sabbath, or day of rest and worship, is on what day of the week? Saturday. All right. Do the Jewish people celebrate any other holidays besides Passover? Yes, they celebrate Rosh Hashanah, Hanukkah, Yom Kippur, all right? So the read aloud tells us that every year at Passover, the rabbi reads the same story from the Torah. It is the story of Exodus from Egypt. Why do you think it is important for the Jewish people to remember this story? This is kind of your opinion, okay? I think it's probably important to them because it reminds them um, of things that they should be thankful for, right? Okay. In the read aloud you heard, I am going to the synagogue to hear the story of Moses once again. I want you to say the word synagogue. Synagogue. Can you say it in a whisper voice? Synagogue. Can you say it in a robot voice? Synagogue. A synagogue is a place of worship for the Jewish people. A synagogue, also called a temple, is where the Jewish people go to pray. Have you ever been to a synagogue or a different place of worship that is similar to a synagogue? I want you to try to use the word synagogue when you tell about it. So, I don't go to a synagogue, but I go to a church on Sundays and... Churches are kind of like synagogues because that's where I go to worship, okay? What's the word we've been talking about? Synagogue. So I'm going to read some activities or say some symbols that may or may not belong inside of a synagogue. 
you should either say that could happen in a synagogue or that could not happen in a synagogue. Okay. The rabbi read from the holy book called the Torah. That could happen in a synagogue, right? Loud cheers were heard as the basketball players took their places on the court. That would not happen in a synagogue. The Jewish people bowed their heads in prayer. That could happen in a synagogue. The star of David was hung in the front of the building. That could also happen in a synagogue. Elephants and tigers arrived for the spectacular circus performance. That wouldn't happen in a synagogue. All right, guys, let's check that we went over our learning objectives. We reviewed facts about Abraham. Um, we identified key information about Judaism. We were able to demonstrate an understanding of the word synagogue. We're going to put our key facts about Judaism into a graphic organizer. Um, we identified key information about Judaism. All right. Awesome, awesome work, guys. See you next time.